So they're going to be working out here while during our meeting, backfilling all this. Just, just so everybody knows what the noise is. We thought it was Sam making noise. Quiet as a mouse back here. Yeah. <laughs> That's how we want our attorneys. Quiet as a mouse. Yeah. No touche. That would be different. <laughs> Attorney that's quiet, is that yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> well, everyone's quiet until you wind her up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she usually, usually I say something, but then all of a sudden we're in detection. Yeah. <laughs> we could do that today. Well, might be forced retirement. Yeah, well, <laughs> let's talk. Let's so talk. I know. What do you say? <laughs> You're ready, Carrie? Yeah. You don't repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to call the meeting to order. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Smockler. Here. Packer. Here. Smith. Here. Manning. Here. Hammond. Here. Any conflict of interest declarations? Hearing none. Uh, approve agenda. Move to approve. Mike, did you? Yeah. Uh, I want to add uh, talk about uh, Amulet Service and Diary. Amulet Service Diary. Oh, okay. So we can go ahead and add that on. Yeah. Okay, and I'll second it. So I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all, uh, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes, motion passes. Approve minutes. Move to approve the minutes. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes, Mockler. Yes, motion passes. Are there any visitors to be heard? Hearing none, Dennis. We've got wild parsnip first. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if any people know what it is. I had never seen it in Clay County until last year. And we got to get some scouting around and figured out where it came from. It came from the old ethanol, the place that was going to be an ethanol plant. Oh. And all the fuel we hauled in there. And it does, it, uh, it gives humans a rash. And they have it pretty heavy in uh, Minnesota where I used to go fishing. And they said it can be a pretty bad rash. Hmm. So anyways, I contacted two people that own the property up there. We were finding it in Meckling Township. <laughs> and we were spraying. And I contacted the two people that own the property of, of the old ethanol plant and asked them if they could, would voluntarily spray it in a letter uh, stating that it's not an obvious weed. I can't force them to do anything. And I talked to uh, Brenda Sievert, Department of Ag, and she said I could apply for a competitive uh, grant and spray it ourselves and I pay for it that way. But after looking at it, I mean, Two to three hundred dollars is all it's going to take to spray it, and uh, I don't want to go through all the work to apply for a grant just for that. Well, I drove by there this morning, and it looks like they have sprayed. Okay. So it's yeah, it's great. Good. I just don't want to get it started in Clay County and spray. Right. Right. Well, kind of keep a pretty close eye on them. Yeah. Just around the, yeah. the area yeah. too. <laughs> it was there last year. We we didn't realize where it was coming from last year. It was in the Meckley Township ditches, and we were spraying it. Yeah. And then this year we discovered it was in the right, right. That's where it came from. Yeah. So I guess there's really nothing to say okay. more than that. But I thought you should be aware of yeah. the new wheat coming in. They make beer and wine up with it in, in Europe. From yeah. The <laughs> Question of something I found in my yard. Identifier was hemlock. Poison hemlock. Yeah. There's there's that. I mean, last year, this year, 
Yep. Yep. And poison hemlock can spread. I had it at my place before, and I, I always sprayed it. But uh, there's getting to be more and more weeks. Uh, the the two new ones that well, we uh, we added the common mullen. That's getting thicker. And uh, the absence worm with it stayed at it uh, two year year and a half ago is getting more and more prevalent throughout the county. We're trying to get on with this take control. We had I had one place I don't know if you know where or the hill above the ladies uh, log cabin there. That feed yard was full of wormwood say trapped in this wormwood. I I realized that people are old and he was on dialysis and whatnot. I sent him letters and letters to you know control it or give us a call and we'll help you. Uh, they contacted Brian Mount and Brian called me. They want Brian to go to the spread. Well, there's so much trash in there, you can't go in there with a tractor and sprayer. And I told Brian, I said, I sent them a letter saying they could hire us to come in and do it. We'd have to do it by hand, which I'd still rather do that than put them under enforcement. And so they did call back finally this fall. Budget request. I guess you have a copy of it. I didn't plan on buying any equipment this next year. Um, I had ordered a new Kubota this year. It has not come in yet. I ordered it through Mark Machinery and Mark Machinery got bought out and they're no longer a Kubota dealer. They told me it's going to show up and it'll up at Pipers and Sioux Falls. I've been in contact with Pipers and they know the price, they know everything. Uh, <coughs> so they let me know when it shows up. I mean, if it doesn't, it's not a big deal other than I'd like to put that money away for the one next year. Yep. So Pfeiffer's is the closest Kubota dealer now? That are Sioux City, and I don't know how to Sioux City. So McCleskey and Yankton's trying to get it, but they haven't got it yet. Um, I don't know. Pfeiffer's, I've been up there. We took one up there to get work on. They've been really good. And they're very knowledgeable. Oh, definitely. It's just, it's an hour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the only difference basically in your budget is what you, 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 not, you don't have any in there for machinery in it this year. Right. I so did raise wages some and I, sure. I raised chemicals some because the price of chemicals has gone up. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's basically, I've never seen to have gone over on Yes, I don't see any problem with it. No, looks good. We do, you know, of course, it's been so dry the last couple of years, we haven't really done any. But uh, we just do some larvicide and some bends doing it in the wet spot. And that's, I still have some larvicide left over there. Been pretty, pretty slim this year, too. Yeah. Yeah. And wet spots. Yeah. Yeah. Which, that part's good. Yeah. <clears throat> now, if we just do something about the chiggers, I got, I got, I got clobbered mm -hmm. this last week. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, Dennis? No, I'm making any other questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Dennis. Thanks. Rod, Bob Anderson, ditch cleaning. Yeah, Robert asked, Robert asked if he could do a little ditch cleaning there on the block by uh, where Sean lives down there is just maybe three bucket loads. So the water will actually run into the culvert instead of backing up to the east. I looked at it and we talked. I mean, he said he'd throw a few, some brome grass out there. When he got it done, he'd just take the 
dirt up on the hill and put it in his feed lot. And I, I don't see any problem, but I told him not just to start digging until I talked it over with you or you guys will be getting phone calls because we I told them we usually bring it up in front of you and you know so I I don't see any reason why you can't do it. I mean I if you need to approve it, I recommend that you approve it. He's, he's not gonna get carried away. No. Are you gonna be out there when he's digging? Or? Yeah, I told him to give me a call when he gets out there and then we see what the pipe looks like too and stuff, so. So he's not changing the pipe or anything, he's just removing ditch debris. That's yeah, it just what runs off the bluff hill there and so right. in you know, over the years and just another one of those spots we haven't got to. Sounds like a win-win to me. We're gonna do a motion though. Move to approve that. I have a motion and a second, any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Mockler. Yes, motion passes. Uh, 2023 budget. Yeah, I left my little budget sheet on the desk, but of course I added in the 12.6 in the salary, everything else. On the top there, kind of stayed basically within three percent. I think they're one, two. I don't remember what it was. Um, yeah, the only thing, my budget. I mean, my materials and supplies. Um, I don't know. It's kind of hard. I can't get anybody. You know, to even come close to give me an estimate on what. Stuff is even worth less this year, let alone next year. So a lot of those are, I guess, for lack of a better word, a guess at what you know. I know gas has come down. We just got gas yesterday for three twenty-two, and I got it at three fifty. So I don't know that that up there could fluctuate. The microservicing is a big deal too. You know, that can fluctuate with the oil. But basically, we're going to do about maybe a couple miles more than we did last year. Or this year, I mean, well, we haven't done them yet. But it's so 33, was it? This year is 31, I believe. 31, yeah. And, or, yeah, 31. But then we added uh, the West County line, which is like half of ours, so four four miles because we're not going the whole way. The Slough South Irene, we met with Brad and Yankton County Superintendent. We decided we're just going to pave that and chip seal that, just on account of. The, I mean, right now it's good. It's I've never seen it this dry along that the county line. That's a pretty spongy section. Yeah, so we don't want to, we're just going to patch the spots and then chip seal it, and then we'll, that road should be good if it lasts while they got 46 flows. That's something to bring up later. But I don't know any questions on the materials. You see anything out of line there? You're right, it's pretty hard to guess it. Even the salt sand, which we used to get for like two bucks a ton, <clears throat> because it's a byproduct of the gravel. You know, they take so much out, so their gravel meets state specs. And they said it just by the time you get a guy in a loader there to load it, now it's up to ten and a half, and <laughs> uh, you know, and salt is. 75 bucks, I haven't even called for an estimate, but that's what the state is getting, $75 a ton. Thank God we don't use a lot of it. Right. You know, we don't do 100%. Like, Union County is starting to do that on the North Sioux down there, but I, 
I'm still a firm believer if we put we we mix it four to one, four load, four bucket loads of sand to one bucket load of salt, and you can still see the salt laying on the road, but that the people don't see the salt, they see the sand. And they're always calling the state. How come you haven't sanded this? Well, they put salt down, then that salt melts, and they uh, sometimes it makes it worse. Yeah. You know, but if you got some grit down there, at least people can see it. Right. Plus, I still think the sand helps. Don't help it melt, but it helps for traction. Right. So Union County went to the straight salt. Just on the like the south half where north soon you go to dudes. I don't know how far north they come, maybe Jefferson. Really? And then they also use a brine. They, they don't really pre-treat it, but they wet it and then the salt sticks a little better. I believe they still throw a little sand in. You know, when it gets really, really cold, there's nothing. The salt won't melt either, you know. I guess below zero, way below zero. But uh, we've been getting by with it. I haven't had no complaints except for we haven't got there quick enough, of course, right. but <laughs> can't be everywhere at once. But <laughs> come close. <laughs> then, if there's no questions about that, I believe Terry can tell me this. I think I had that number at the top of the page is wrong, isn't it? And that's supposed to be $709. You have on this mach my machinery budget page. Can you look on? Uh, I left that, so I was looking at that, and I I don't know how I come up with that number. <coughs> I think it's supposed to be like seven hundred nine thousand one one seven oh nine seven eighty eight seven eighty eight seven oh nine seven eighty eight. So I apologize for that. That's wrong so this number down here the 360 will be about 70,000 less than that so it'll be about 290. So next year the only thing I have planned is a new motor grader. We're having a, the, the 2012 we have left is giving us grief and it didn't start again this morning. So it's going down the road. We spent enough money on it. And it's got close 6,000 hours. And last time I bought a blade was 2019, and they were 280 something, and they're 389 now. And that is with the source well discount and the cat, the butler discount. That's crazy. Is that a new one, though? That's a 2020, I believe it will be a 2022. Because if we get it in January, unless they build it, you know, it depends on when I sign the paper. And I told them I couldn't sign the paper until the budget got approved. That makes a difference on whether you get a late 22 or when they start making the 23s. Because the last one we bought was used, right? It was a year old. No, both of them were new. Okay, I thought we got one it from two folds. The loader. Oh, oh it, you're right. The first one we got, two falls at least it, and then there was no snow, and it was like 89 hours on it. So then we got the full seven year warranty, and the whole nine yards. You're right, that was. And that was the one in 19? That was the 18. The 2000. Well, we bought one in 17, that was an 18. We bought one in. 19 that would okay. end up being a 19. Okay. So one of them two, I don't it might have been the 19 that was uh because now Sioux Falls has I don't know if they went all John Deere's or if they're half and half and, and Butler don't they don't do that anymore. They you can't get one of those anymore. So I don't know where they go. Hmm. So but then this year on my 22 budget I had for a 450 chassis and a flatbed and of course that ain't getting built can't get that till next year so in the on the other sheet I showed you when we bought the tractor it was like 130 
thousand left in there, and that was sixty-five of that for the pickup. And so I don't have anything else I'm buying that I know of, unless we. I should have had Dennis stick around. We Dennis and I talked about maybe putting a loader on that tractor, but it depends on how he, the ditch board wants to spray those ditches because he's got a boom made for a loader bucket. When we get a rental tractor, we always get the loader and he's got a tank goes on to three point and he's got a boom on there so he can reach out and he can get about half the crick from one side and half the crick from the other where, you know, where he can drive. Right. Like the ink and clay ditch works a little better on that one. But we didn't know I got a new loader for 20, is $23,000, I couldn't believe that. I mean, I should have figured that everything else went up, but we didn't know what to ditch for it if they'd be, you know, depending on Dennis to do the spraying or, I mean, in other words, it would be helpful to have that loader for that. And I don't know what, like the Prairie Center ditch, does he ever spray that or? Yeah, yeah he could actually use it there. Probably. I don't know what he uses out there either. either. I know he took that tractor and the boom out quite a bit two years ago. And of course, we haven't been able to get a rental tractor for it. Ever. In fact, he's going to get the shield on the back window so we get that side that side chip more hooked up to it. And that's something else I want to talk to you later. But, but then, like, you know, this year I had a tractor and a boom truck, and we bought that out of this year's budget. So that took 360 something out of there. I didn't know what you guys thought. I know you're looking to cut. So that's no problem with me unless you want to stick it in the road. In other words, it's going to be quite a bit less than what I turned in. Just for what's happened in the last month with the machinery anyway. So what do you think about it? The loader you think would be a good investment? You get enough use I, I think so, but and I just, you know, I was thinking 15,000 and I just was going to do it, but that's, I mean, we get a source well discount on that. That's, I don't know what it would be. That's with the discount. And I believe Titan took a grand off it. I mean, of course, Titan's trying to be real good to us too, because we never buy anything from them. Is that the tractor where you gonna put it on the tractor that you were gonna? Yeah, that we bought. Yeah. Yeah, so we took delivery last, last Thursday. What what brand of loader is it? Is a international it's LT one oh one two, I believe. And that's got the Euro Euro mount, and which means you can put anything on it, which we already got a set of John Deere um, ports. Out the yard for it. We bought them for the other one. Because once in a while we do end up without a loader in the yard and somebody comes to get culverts or we get culverts, it works for that too. But now I, I wanted to ask you as a ditch board whether you thought you'd be using Dennis. You know, I know you've done some, and like he said on lateral 50 along the highway, you sprayed those. Uh, cattails. cattails with two. So, I mean, it'd probably be more the wheat department using it than anything else, unless we're using it for loading. If we need a loader in the, you know, it's not as handy as a, as a regular loader, too much backing around, and they don't lift high enough to load our trucks. Right. You know, but So the ditch board does hire the weed department to spray, but you know, as long as the loader's not sprung and beat up, you can always put it on the next tractor. Yeah, yeah that's brand right. new, brand new. Loader. Right. They didn't have any. I asked him about a used one, and he said the used ones go down the road to ink and salvage because they're usually 
Like sprung the frame sprung plus the buffer. Yeah. I could see where he's did it would probably be if he got a way to load the boat to the tractor and rotor up, he'd have to drive it. Well, usually he he'll take off from there and start working. You know, he's he used it on township roads that move too, but with the girls, you know, or the summer helper, helpers are not usually too familiar with the tractor. Right. And we did use it for packing gravel, the rental tractor uh, before too, which you got to have some moisture when you lay the gravel before it does any good to pack. I don't know if anybody's more kind of a tractor pull over the weekend, but one of the county rollers was working up there. <laughs> one of the guys wanted to use it so bad he pulled it out of the weeds and fixed all the tires and <laughs> and, and they stayed up the whole the whole thing. I don't know what he did, but so it's just in Wakanda. I told him park it in Wakanda and the next year you can use it again because well, one thing we don't have not to pull it. Now we do if we did, but I guess I could see buying the loader. I think you could find a lot of uses for it. Like you said, it's not like it's something that that you can't use again on another tractor. Right. Yeah, and I don't foresee I'm not gonna buy another tractor. <laughs> don't say never. I guess <laughs> it's brand new, so it'll last forever. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but well, I think July would be a good day. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what do you? I know you're looking for money, and I got some there. Unless you want to put it towards the roads, that's up to you guys. How much money do you have? That I'd say, well, Roughly. you know, I can't go by that top number because I had. 160 for the tractor uh -huh. and 160 for the boom truck because that's what a new boom truck looked like because I couldn't find a usual. Okay. So I mean, that's 360,000, but that don't add up right with the number I had on top. Although I had a lesser number there. I don't know what happened there. I yeah. get 454,772. Left over? Yeah. yeah. Or what I. Once you subtract that, okay, that free and the one sixty plus one sixty that that equals what three twenty instead yeah. of three sixty you've got there. Yeah. My calculator didn't work so good, <laughs> but that's I mean there's some place if you want to cut the budget that I mean that's great. From there I know you're looking for money. Everybody's looking for money. I'd rather see you come out of there and not buy anything that. Cut back on what we're doing on the other sheet. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Well, you got to stay up on the road, otherwise you're in trouble. And I think you guys have been letting me stay on top of it. We get everybody else to help us not tear it right back up again. Yeah. Okay. Did you get any word on the damage on the dropping trailers and stuff? On yeah, I got. Here's the evidence, as long as the state's attorney's in the room. Here's the evidence that who did it, because uh, I don't know who did it. But as of this morning, I sent out eight letters to the contractors telling them that we spent millions of dollars fixing these roads and another million or more this year, and we need some help. Um, it's kind of odd because Friday I got called from the sheriff and Larry had to go out on the bluff road and they didn't just unload an excavator, unloaded a dozer and tore it all up where that little barn burned down and some guy is going to build a house there. And yeah, so she deputy went out, made a report, some guy out of Nebraska. So we had to come up with an estimate and send him and Sheriff's going to go up and check out these other two when I give them the details. And I come across another one yesterday. And every one of them is on our microservice service road. It ain't on a old Chips Hill Blotter Road, which, you know, I mean, they tore it up right through the old Chips. It was 
no way we can get it back. And we just have to go out crack seal, try to keep the moisture from getting in there. Might have to put a little skin patch over it, but now it's crazy. All it takes is a little rubber, put some rubber tires on the road. And, no, no, they ain't thinking. Yeah. Or pulling the driveway. Right. So I, I put that in there too. If your driver can't back it in the driveway, why not go down to the next intersection and road it in the ditch? That's what we did up on the Bollum Road. But the Millen River, we rode it all the way back to the other bridge with the, in the road ditch. What the, I don't care if they drive in the road ditch. Whatever. I did send out letters this morning, so I'm expecting to get some phone calls. Maybe by the guys that did it, admit to it, or you're going to get the ones calling going. It wasn't me. I know, and I put in there. <laughs> I put in there, and I appreciate the ones that haven't done road damage. You know, I tried to cover the whole thing and not. You know, I wrote the first letter out, and then I went back and took out all the explanations. <laughs> So I can send it out. <laughs> but yeah, that's you got any other questions about the budget? That's about all I can tell you. It's a lot. I think the first budget Art turned in for me, I about tipped over. That was like two million 16 years ago. If we could go back to that, that'd be yeah, great. I, boy, I'm with you. I, it's crazy what you got to pay for stuff. Anybody have anything else for Rod? I got a couple small items. So just for clarification with the budget then, that extra 454, 772. Should I just ship that over to supplies and materials? It's leaving, or not, not the, the 320, I'm sorry. 320, yeah. <clears throat> Good question. Why don't we just set it to the side right now? Yeah. Okay. That's what for me. So what's your question? I actually have a question for the state's attorney. <laughs> okay, so I'm fighting with the DOT because they closed Highway 46 at Iyer and they're working west of there with no warning until about 300 feet east of the Highway 19 that goes to Viper. Their billboard is setting at the corner, says this is a detour. Everybody blows by that. They go by Wakanda, says it's closed three miles. There's one mile east of Irene. And you come over the hill and you get down to the county lines, there's a barricade. So guess where they're going? All down the county line. We're trying to work on there. Not only that, but they're beating the heck out of it. All the semis. I mean, I talked to one guy, he stopped to see what's going on and asked me where he was going. And I said, why didn't you turn off at 46? He said, you know, I think there was a sign that this road over here, but I didn't see it. I went blown by. I have no advance warning, nothing. You know, they, they figure that four miles is advance warning, warning enough. So I met with the Yankton County Highway Superintendent, Yankton County, uh, we have no through trucks on a couple of our roads, but they got passed a resolution, no through trucks and a $500 fine. He told me to talk to you guys. He's going to talk to his commissioners. And I mean, I don't know how else to do it. I, and I'm old truck driver at heart. I hate to see them guys when they don't have any warning. But also hate to see that road get busted all the heck when we're trying to get it fixed up this year. So I didn't know if you guys, I mean, it's nothing we can do today. Yeah. But uh, I asked the auditor, what's her name, Patty, 
permeate to the email me the resolution and stuff that maybe I didn't know you could check in. I I looked through all the laws and I well, I get lost in there anyway, but I couldn't find one that mentioned anything about no through trucks. But they said there is a law that backs it up and a five hundred dollar fine is the maximum. But I wouldn't care if they got the fine or not, if we could get a deputy highway patrolman up there to stop them, tell them that's what these signs mean, and you know, word get around pretty quick. But I come, I go to Beersford last night to watch my personal pickup, but to look, and there ain't you last year they had one sitting that truck down, said it's closed 10 miles away. They have nothing there. Nothing at Highway 19 going south. Nothing at Frog Creek, thank goodness. Next one to hit 19 going to Viper. And then they're cruising. I mean, I was going along 65 and I looked over and barely could catch the sign. I knew it was there. They're putting another road barricade sign up on the south side of 46 because I called yesterday, but I sent them another email this morning. I mean, if we can't get no cooperation out of them, I don't know. What if we put up a barricade that says no through traffic? We could, I suppose. So I different know. than what they're doing. I don't know if uh, that would be a question for I mean, Sam, if line. we can enforce it. Yeah, right there, right there, uh, 46 in the county line, just road closed to through traffic. Well, I, I hate the hot. Uh, Charge somebody five hundred dollar fine with without just because the state doesn't do what they're supposed to be doing. Right. So I, I agree with you there. That way, at least when they got there, they go okay. Well, at least okay. the DOT would call you. Then. Yeah. They'd be like, well, where are they supposed to go? Yeah. Yes. Well, turn make them turn at nineteen. It's yeah. not a problem having the DOT call me. They've been talked to them three times yesterday. That's On account of the email I sent first time. Well, I mean, we can do that this afternoon. Yeah. I don't know if I, this is Andy, sorry, I want to jump in. If what What is through traffic? If you've got low uh, people that travel from Irene to Yankton regularly, is that through traffic? Uh, I know you want to keep the trucks off, but what about everybody else when you're telling them they can't use the road? Good point. Yeah, that's that's why I'm bringing it up. That, and that road is the joint jurisdiction. It's, uh, yeah, it's Yankton and us. Yeah. I think what needs to take place is uh, better signage on 46. Um, we're seeing increased traffic on 306th Street uh, because of this uh, lake traffic uh, over the weekend, a lot of boats and campers. And um, I expect we're gonna continue to see that. Um, I, I, I know that the sign that the, the official detour route takes traffic north on 19 and then uh, west again on 18. And that's because state highway will always detour on the state highway, even though they know people will not use that route because it's you know many miles out of the way. They I don't believe they have an official detour route for um, traffic from I-29 to uh, say Yankton, so they'd be going south. Nobody wants to go north to 18 and then uh, then west to 81 and south again, so they're going to turn south. If, even if you could catch them on 19, but they're still gonna eventually be on county roads. So I think that that signage that they have needs to say no through traffic and not road closed ahead. Road closed ahead is, uh, they don't really know what that means that for some reason people don't, don't follow that. But I think this is on DOT. I, I sure hate to try to find our way out of this and then have be that uh, we have a fine that we don't implement. Um, but I, I think that, uh, having a no truck traffic uh, south on the um, on that county line is probably appropriate. No through trucks, maybe something to that effect, rather than say no through traffic. Um, we want to we want to keep trucks. Problem is those trucks now come to a stop there at that intersection. They don't have anywhere to turn around, and then they start driving through the city streets, and we're going to have Irene complaining because they've got semis driving on their city streets. They can go stop. north. Yeah, and then. That's another county's complaint, but not us. And, and I'm sure that they do have those going north that would have gone north on 81. They probably turned north on 
on the on the 452nd as well. It's a it's a tough one. Worst part about it is not just one here, it's going to be two. Because they're just doing some uh, box culverts. And then, you know, the dirt work is yet to come. So, yeah. I'll see what Mike says from Yankton County. I guess we're probably stuck. I'll see what DOT says. I think that you should consider a no through trucks sign, something to that effect. You know, have yeah, I could have some notice not to go this way. I mean, I realize they got nowhere to go, but you want you don't want them to choose that route. Okay, Andy, if we put up no through trucks and they still keep going through there, then what? Well, we we need an ordinance to enforce for us to do anything. Yeah, we'll have to wait till next week to get it. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. Or by then I'll find around here too. Can we do it next week, Carrie, or do we have to publish that? So if it has to be done by ordinance, then we have to publish. Oh, we sure. have to have the first reading and second reading. Okay. That's if it can be done by resolution, then we don't have to publish. It just has I'll to be on the agenda. See what I get back from Patty. Maybe Patty I, will send it to you, maybe. I think. I'm not the state's attorney, but I think it can be done by resolution because I think Union County has done it and I think the city of Jefferson has done it really recently. So I know they were having some truck traffic issues down there. So I think it can be done by resolution. Rod, with your conversations with the state, are they just unwilling to block the, you know, basically barricade the highway there at 19 North and uh, put local traffic only as if, you know, you have to go around the barricades for local just as if the road was closed closer than that no so that's what we need we need those tra trucks to turn at that point yeah i i brought that up too and then he said we're gonna have the city i read um complaining because we're cutting off all their business and I, none of those trucks stop i followed six of them last thursday and they all or wednesday and they all drove Right into Irene and turn south. I mean, they didn't yeah. even go north. Irene's not going to complain about the lack of trucks passing through the town. Yeah. They, uh, I don't. I don't believe that's going to happen. Right. And that's what I. <laughs> yeah. They. Uh, but really, what we need to do is is limit from a uh, uh, four or uh, Highway 19 North, which is I believe 456 Avenue. We need to limit that to local traffic only west west of there. Yeah, and see, I think west of Irene, it says road close to local, or road close local traffic only is what the sign says. Yeah, well, they need to close it. They and need I, to put up some barricades. Right, and I should have took a picture of it, but I never thought of that. They yeah. got one barricade up there I went, when I went through the other day, last week. They just say that. Yeah, oh, see, it just closed last Monday is when they closed it. So, I mean, and we're out marking the pavement on the county line, and all of a sudden, here comes eight trucks over the hill. Couldn't figure out what's going on, and all of a sudden, I remembered that. <clears throat> I'll see what Yankton County sends us. I should have included you, Carrie. Sorry. That's okay. She would have sent it to you. We mess around very long, and, and uh, uh, much truck traffic growth through the slough will end up with a truck hub deep there that'll block the road <laughs> and the good the only good thing is it's dry under the road right now yeah i mean that's they'll still what, damage it though that's what i uh, but i mean that's what saying that we've already fixed a couple of blowouts yeah um uh, is going to be a paper patch but before we got to it the trucks and it's uh, no northbound traffic it's all going south right of course Okay, well, I just wanted to make you aware of what was going on. I have the statute number and a copy of Yankton's resolution coming to my email, so I'll forward that on to you, Rod. Do you have anything else in that? Yeah, and then uh, the land deed structure. We'll find out tomorrow if they have to take it all back out or not. You're kidding. No, they put... 
the floor. They after everything cures for so many days, they core it, take it somewhere else, and then put it in a press. It's supposed to 4,600 pounds is where it's supposed to break, and it was like 38, 37. So they took some more cores, and then the DOT has to decide what they're going to do. And I, there's no way I can't believe they could knock that floor out, connect it back up to the upper part, because it's all poured. It's ready to cover. And I remember, I don't know if you remember last year that that same thing happened at Hemmingson's box cover, and only it was the top. And it, it crushed at 42. It was supposed to be 46, but the state figured that that low volume road there that they let it pass, but the contractor got digged and so did the concrete supplier. But of course they used the same supplier again this year and the DOT said, no, it ain't, it's a, it ain't the same name. I know it ain't the same name, but it's coming out of the same place. So where's it coming out of? Vermont used to be standard or whatever now it's cmi or yeah. out of iowa yeah is that uh any idea what's the problem is it a mixed problem or are they pouring it too damn no, bad it's a it's a mixed problem they were there i was there when they poured the floor yeah and i just because it's interesting i but dot had like six guys out there and they were all doing their swamp tests and right. all the stuff and all that so the slump made us went, okay. But after they took, uh, after they did the floor, they had to wait so long. They put rebar up, but they couldn't pour anymore. Then they cored it, and it and it didn't pass them, but it hadn't completely cured. But they told the contractor to hold off, but he went ahead and, and just kept going. So I don't know. <laughs> you know. Well, that's their fault, then. So I don't know what's going on. Um, they took, they poured them Friday. They have to set for five days. So tomorrow they're going to break them. And then DOT will let me know what, you know, the outcome is. But I just thought I better let you know because, I mean, for a month it's set there with the top on it. And, you know, they, Nolts even moved out. They, they got a couple of trailers. They took the boom because they're working on 46. West Irene doing one over there. So how much of this bridge are we paying for? Uh 20%. So it's like so if it doesn't meet spec, they didn't they didn't meet spec. Just tell the state if they're gonna okay it, they can pay the other 20%. See, we tried that on the last one. And we got we still got the bill. Tough because they said it was up, you know, it was okay. This one is way worse than the other one. Then what good are the specs? I know. If they're not going to follow them, I know that's exactly right. Well, I'm wondering when they took the test cylinders at the time of the pour, did they, you know, there's seven, 14, and 28 day uh, breaks that you do on those test cylinders. I wonder how those turned out. I don't know. Did they do them? I've been the inspector that took those as a summer job. Right, yeah, but I'm just wondering if they took them. One, if you took a slump, you you took uh, you took slump tests, you took uh, test cylinders, and that seven day test should give you a big idea right there. But the, the I biggest... think it was uh, I think it was uh, seven day one. They went back and courted, you know, after it set up. I don't know how long it set up. I can find that out though, but yeah. But the sure. problem is the contractor didn't listen right. when they said, don't keep pouring. Right. So now we've got a whole structure that would have only had to have been a floor to come out. Yeah, when right. you get the stop order, that, that means you stop as the contractor. Yeah, there was no stop order. They just suggested it. From the way it sounds, from the emails I've gotten, anyways, yeah. and I'm pretty more welcome. You guys can look at the conversations. It's hard to issue a stop order. I've been there and I thought I might get tarred and feathered right on the site, but uh, it's up to that the inspector on site that's working for what probably Great Plains Engineering or who they hire for the no, test. Actually, it was the DOT is, was doing a slump test. Uh -huh. They had their uh, engineer 
up there with like four or five other guys. I mean, they were taking samples out of two different spots from each load because they had a big pumper truck. Then they do another section. And as I stood there about three hours, watched, and, I, and that was just the first part of the pour. I didn't watch the whole thing. That ain't my job. That's the engineer on site job. Right. So I don't know what those results were. I just heard about it a couple weeks ago that we got a problem after everything was. Because I was wondering how come they weren't backfilling. And they had put the rip wraps laying on the road. So I asked what's going on. And then I got kind of reluctantly, they put me in the loop, I guess. I don't know. Well, I'm going to assume that this contractor has never had to tear a structure out. It's always been approved in the end. That's that's going to be the problem. That's why they, any, any normal person, you know, when they said, you better stop because this isn't passing, yeah. would stop. Yeah. They've, they've been through this before, obviously, and, and know that usually we're going to get paid. It's going well, to be fine. I hate to tell you this, but this contractor is the one that did the Hemings and Bridge, too. So. Huh. huh. With the same concrete. Yeah. Different company. Different, Different company, name. yes. Different name. Different name. That makes all the difference. So, yeah, I just wanted you to be aware of what's going on with that, too, because... You would think once you got burned by the concrete from one outfit, I don't care if it is a different name, that you would kind of look for somebody else. But they didn't get burned. No. Well, you said they got dinged a little. Yeah, they got. I don't know what they got dinged. Of course, that ding comes off the top end. They don't come <laughs> off the county's end. So I went into this bridge for about two hundred, hundred eighty thousand. That's our twenty percent. But then we're stuck with it. All right. I that's mean, that's part. it's not just we're stuck with this. We're stuck with a with a bridge or a box culvert that didn't meet spec. I mean, if if that's what they They'll want to do, change I'll, the specs. Yeah, I'll so I'll start be, building box culverts if we can just do whatever. Thank God, this is the last one. You said it tested at thirty eight. It broke at thirty eight. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what it said, 38. So it's down 10% at least. Yeah, I, I was going to ask my kid about that to get the insight on an engineer, see what, uh, how come they would let it go. You know, he works for an independent company out of Sioux Falls, but you know, he still, he deals with that kind of stuff. That's what he does at Bridges and yeah, stuff. So it's kind of curious. Every time we get together, his wife won't let us talk business. So I got to <laughs> take him out for dinner someday. But you said it's got to meet. It's got a forty six hundred pounds. Forty six hundred pounds was. So it's almost. It's between seventeen and eighteen percent. Yeah, that's low. right. Yeah, but it's quite, quite a bit. Yeah. Well, I'll see what they tell us. I just wanted you to be aware of. Oh, what's going on up there? Anything else for me? That I took up enough of your time. Unless I need to stick around for executive session. Not today. No, you didn't cause one today. Uh, but can I call one? <laughs> Do you need one? Yeah. No, not today. Okay. But so if that what we talked about earlier comes up. I do need to call one, right? Because it's for personnel, even if it's just me. Okay. I'll make up. Me and Dennis will go have a chat and then we'll make up our minds. Because I told you I'd give you a year. And my birthday was 18th of July. Then that way I can iron out all the what you guys are looking for. It's really tough to retire too early. I, I know all about that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you keep telling me you retired, and yet I still see you. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm just retiring from here. <laughs> well, I retired from there, you know, at the end of the year. 
Of course, but if we yeah, when I was out and did a little work yesterday on a job over in Kenny County, <laughs> they were short on people, and I went if, to help. If them. we fire him a week before he wants to quit, we could save on the retirement party. That's true. <laughs> no, no one on the party. I just could walk out the door. I'm out of here. <laughs> Not that I'm just getting there. <laughs> With all these other issues coming up, so I'm just. <laughs> Don't believe him, Rod. It isn't that bad. Yeah, yeah I, I know. <laughs> I talked to somebody else and they told me the same thing. Said, yeah. Here's the guy that's working on sprayers. <laughs> talk, to, talk to my wife. She's got the same. She'll be, she's just a few months younger than you are. You're still yeah, she's, she's pretty awesome. close, yeah. And she right. already retired? Yeah. What am I still doing? I don't know if I'm going to work for that 30 year pin or not. Got one right here. I just got it. Got it yesterday. <laughs> I've been a, a nationally certified professional geologist for 30, 31 years now. They just got the pen to me yesterday. No, I don't need no pen either. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Or that's what the had to write that last we'll, check for you. We'll leave that for a different day. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. <laughs> Dr. Stanage. Good morning. I'm Tom Stanage. I'm the executive director of Lewis and Clark for Eva Alvin. Probably better. Speak. Yeah, if you, you can either sit or stand, whichever you prefer. I, I can stand here. Is that on? Yeah, up is up. Is up, up. There you okay. Go. So I'm Tom Stanage. I'm the executive director of Lewis and Clark Behavioral Health. The talk about retirement makes me a little bit nervous is that this is the 28th year that I've been in front of this commission and I haven't, I haven't missed a, a meeting over that each year over that um, time period. Yeah, yeah. So I have two things for you today and I'm going to pass these out. One can, can, can you? Uh, one, one's just a small PowerPoint. And the first thing I have, and I do this every year, is I talk about our numbers, and I do that to try to remind you about what we do and what our services are. And for, and this is reporting based on calendar year. And this last calendar year, our numbers were up um, in Clay County that you see total outpatient mental health, and those are people that we see for a relatively short period of time. Um, a lot of what our focus is, is providing care to individuals who have severe mental illness and kids that have serious emotional disturbances. That um, the, the SED services that represent kids that we're serving, kids and families, we're in every school um, uh, in every county that, that we serve as an example. Psychosocial rehab services, those are services that we provide to adults who when I started in this business were all at the state hospital. I mean, the, I think the last time I worked at the state hospital, the population out there was 1800. And I don't wanna date myself, but um, um, the individuals who have severe mental illness that we serve now, we're following in communities. They're mostly living in low income um, apartments, uh, arrangements, and we have case managers that make sure they take their medications and, and support them. That we have substance use treatment, part of that's outpatient treatment, and then we have residential inpatient treatment as well, which is medically monitored. And, and really what I want to share with you today, and which I think is the most important thing, is our crisis services and crisis stabilization services that um, in 2021, we had um, eight individuals that we served in our residential crisis stabilization. Um, and typically that's secondary to a certification evaluation, somebody who's alleged to be a danger to themselves or someone else. And that, that brings me to the PowerPoint. And the thing that I want to help you understand and that it's, it's really significant for the counties that we served is that, I, th I think last time I met, met with you, talked about difficulties that we had getting inpatient beds, even for individuals who were deemed to be a danger to themselves or others because of a mental illness. 
Um, going back to October 2019, with, when the tornado hit in Sioux Falls, there was about 100 inpatient beds taken offline. The last time I checked at um, the Human Services Center, they were down to one acute unit, so about 15 beds for indigent folks who have severe mental illness for the whole state. And in response to that, the, the Lewis and Clark in, in working with the state um, was designated as an appropriate regional facility. Um, and that was in March of 2021. And as an appropriate regional facility, we can take people during the 24 hour hold. We can also um, uh, keep them um, typically for um, up to 72 hours to try to get them stabilized, to avoid hospitalization if we can. That um, we're admitting people 24 seven, um, that everyone's evaluated by a qualified mental health professional. I have a couple pictures. What we're doing right now, just because of the crisis for inpatient beds, we converted space in our inpatient substance use treatment program to provide crisis care. So we're using some of that nursing staff, some of the medical coverage that we use there. And right now we're operating out of the Benedictine Center, the old hospital in Yankton. And you have a picture there where it just has the entrance of that unit there. If you look in the very, the very uh, far end of that picture, you see the entrance to the unit there that the one of the pictures you have is a crisis room. We have two crisis rooms with two beds in each. They're set up so we can do constant observation either through a one-way um, window or through um, a, a video feed. Um, the rooms are set up to be lit literature resistant as much as possible. That the, the important thing that for the county commissioners to understand is that for the first time, the state is supporting, and this is big, you really got to listen to this. The state is supporting the costs for the pre-commitment hearing days. So when you look at those eight individuals we took in residential treatment, you're looking at um, um, potentially diverting costs of an ED visit, which, you know, I don't know what you're paying for the ED visits now, but probably $600, maybe $1,000 a visit. You're saving the costs of the um, pre-inpatient, pre-hearing commitment inpatient hospital days, probably $1,000 a day. Um, and that could be five, six, or seven days, depending on, on when the hearing if we can divert um, the commitment, um, you're talking about uh, the cost of a hearing, which is probably two, three thousand dollars. So it's really, really um, important for counties, and it's something that we've been working for for quite some time, particularly for the counties like Clay County, Yankton County, um, certainly Hutchinson, Douglas, the, the smaller counties we serve that just don't have the tax base to support the costs really associated with the kind of crisis care that, that's, that's needed. And you just don't have the numbers like they have in Sioux Falls or Pennington County where the county has, has really taken on a lot of those, those costs. So um, I'm, I'm here again to, to the, the, the other thing that's really important and it's very last page is that we just received um, $6 million from the state as part of a plan to build a facility that will have a receiving center and it will, will dramatically increase the number of beds that we have for crisis care. And that's a little um, drawing that you have on the very last page. There's six individual rooms there. Um, as you might imagine, when we, we have two people in, in the crisis rooms, it doesn't work very well often to have two people um, who are in crisis in the same room. We have that, we have a small dormitory that we're calling, calling a sobering area for detox. Um, and um, that will then be part of a new inpatient substance use treatment program that will share some of the staff. So pretty important things happening um, that um, we're asking our counties for a 6% increase this year in our um, budget request. 
Um, so that would mean $24,478 about for Clay County. The, the county support is a very small part of our budget, but it's a crucial part that allows us to leverage um, state dollars to be able to provide services. And um, this is probably in, in my career, in my, my many years working in the behavioral health field, the development of regional appropriate, uh, appropriate regional facilities is probably the single most important thing um, that, that I've experienced in my, my career. And, you know, you have to imagine the, the, you know, the ideal is that there's no longer the Pennington County bus transporting uh, people across the state for um, commitment to the Human Services Center, that there's more ready access um, for people who need crisis care. Um, both for people who are um, uh, petitioned and have a commitment, but also for a voluntary basis. We haven't had a voluntary bed for individuals and in, indigent individuals in crisis care for 10 years. So um, any, any questions? I know that's a lot. To... What is it, SCP? Serious emotionally disturbed. That that those are the kids that we serve. So thank you. That was the question yeah, I had. Too. Yeah, I'm uh, sorry. We use a lot of of, cases, so. yeah. of uh, acronyms. So yeah, that that's the only category you had that really went down significantly. Yeah, and and the the reason for that last year was was staffing. We went through a period of time like everybody else where we had some some difficulties recruiting and hiring staff. So the so. need was there, but. Oh yeah, the, I mean the load was reduced because you couldn't accept that. Yeah, those the, so for for kids services, and I, I hate to say this, but by the end of the school year, we will have a very significant waiting list. We'll have forty or fifty kids on the waiting list, and that's historically it's because of the the funds that run out um, for services. But um, there there's a tremendous need for kids and family services. Other questions? Again, um, pro probably one of the more significant things uh, we're gonna we're planning on breaking ground in October for the new crisis care receiving center and um, and hopefully have it built in eighteen months. So, are you gonna have it up there pretty close to where you're at now? We we own property that was. Um, just east of the National Guard there. Okay. We actually have a, a facility there for individuals who have severe mental illness. So the, the city of Yankton actually gave us the property um, about six acres adjoining that, and that's where we're gonna build it, so. Okay. Yeah, I think you made a presentation on that at the, the, the that quarterly- I did, yeah. Commissioner's meeting that yep. was in Yankton almost a year ago that's when it was more of a dream and yeah. um you know the uh june and, and so we we have we put together the financing package now that we've raised about four million dollars locally and this the state's contributing six million and then we just on june 30th um at two o'clock we signed usda um uh rural development a uh, 35 year loan and lock in an interest rate at two and a half percent. And and it had to be done by four o'clock <laughs> that day. So, wow. so we've all of the financings put together and we should go out for bid at the end of August. So and then we'll see what happens. Glad there wasn't a typo at that point. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, but so everything's small. The, the, some of the interesting pieces of this project city gave us land um the highway department wouldn't allow us another cut coming off the highway and so we worked out a deal with the department of military affairs the governor's office and um school and public lands those were all parties involved to share the national guard road so we'll have another access there and then we'll we'll go over to our property from that road so so a lot of a lot of moving pieces so 
in this current one that you do have to have clients share a bed in that crisis room that you, yes. just, yeah. Yeah. you just showed us. Yes. And, and it's a limiting factor, you know, because there's sometimes where you just can't share a bed. And so, yeah. um, you know, we fight with it's, it's feast or famine will be full or, or in, and not have the capacity to take somebody um, or we'll have, a, you know, an empty bed or a couple empty beds. So in how many rooms like that do you have now? Two. So we have two, two. Okay. and so we can take four people at a okay. time. I see. Yeah. So. And it looks like it'd be in the new system. What do you, what do you think you'd be able to occupy? Well, we have, we have 11 beds there. We have six individual rooms. We have a little dormitory and then we have a swing room. And the idea with the dormitory and the swing room, if we have a couple men in the dormitory, then we would have the swing room for a woman is the idea there. So and the swing room and um, the dormitories, kind of a step down area or um, more for people who we probably see frequently and, and we know and just, just need to be a, have a safe place. Yeah. That nurse control area, that puts that windows along there where you can watch, keep an eye on the living area then? Yeah, so there'll be a nursing station and, and you don't see it, but on the back side of this is our, um, it's a large inpatient substance use treatment area. Right. And so the nursing station is just kind of a circle there. And so one side will face the crisis area, the other side will face the inpatient substance use treatment area. Nice. And we, we couldn't do this. Um, we just don't have the volume here to support the crisis care um, unless we share it with another program where we can share nursing staff and, and particularly nursing and medical staff. So. We'll get you an invitation to me, if not when we break ground, when we open, so, okay. Thank you for your support. It's really critical and it allows us to leverage money from the state and that's really what we have to do. So. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. sir. Have a good day. Now he asked for 6%. We budgeted for three. Mm -hmm. right. So we need to decide what we want to do. How much more would that add to his budget? I could say. So the dollar amount of the increase is 600 bucks. That's well, I think you only asked for the six. There's 4,200 that didn't have any increase. That was the, That's what I the um, drug abuse one. That was $4,200. That wasn't raised this year either by 3%, right, Sherry? It wasn't. No, I, thought like, I, I thought I raised that by three. Typically, their, their request is those two budget lines combined. Okay. So if, if I didn't raise that, that's my error there. Looks like 1.5 on um, the drug abuse. Am I looking at the right line? And that's not calculated that currently. They just give us one uh, lump sum request, and then I divide it out between those two oh. budget lines. Okay. So that was probably my error so, there. That... So for their 2022 budget, they've got 18,917. The 2023 request is 19,485. That's more than three percent increase there on the mental health section. I'll just pull up my my budget. Have that loaded. No, that's what I'm doing. Sorry. 
Okay, if you put the drug abuse and the mental health together, you've budgeted 27, 987. So, yeah, so the mental health center, that is the 3% increase. Right. But the, the $4,200 was an increase. Yeah, so that would have been my fault there. So a 6% increase would be like 24,504. So 3% versus the 6% would be, it's like about, a, about an $800 difference. Oh, it's about 700, sorry. About 700 bucks. Yeah. We have a whole lot of choice here. Well, we do, but I mean, going for probably yeah, I do too. Yeah. I don't. We're getting the service we're getting for what we're spending is so. yeah, and it mm -hmm. definitely falls in the right thing to do category. Right, I agree. <clears throat> If I would have moved to do the six percent, I'll second. Do we need that motion right now, or do we just no. amend it? And I mean, at this point, you guys can make changes to the provisional budget sure. until that last meeting in September when you adopt the final one. Yeah. So. Seems like everybody's in agreement on six percent. Relatively minor change compared to definitely <clears throat> everything <Yeah>. else. <laughs> <laughs> it's a yeah, it's a uh, rounding error for for Rod's place. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I did. I got an email from Missy Kale yesterday on the tree plan thing that the numbers that she submitted to us were incorrect. That she was going to send you correct. She did. Numbers. Yep. Yep. She did. And I, when I sent out the letters to all those outside organizations, I gave them like basically through yesterday to get in their requests. And so um, I will be putting those all together and send it out to you. Okay. Yeah, we'll stack them. Mm -hmm. yeah. I said I have a whole stack of them. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I remembered what date it was yesterday. <clears throat>
Resolution 2022-20, calling for election. <clears throat> so this is the updated total project cost here? Yeah. Okay. That's what I received from Dick Strasburg this morning. Probably sent it out last night, but... Carrie, uh, this is Betty. Do I do I have those updated costs? I would have just sent that out this morning, so it should be in your email. Okay, thank you. First looked at it, I see the thirty-three thousand dollars. I thought, or thirty-three million. Excuse me. I thought, oh, it went down. <laughs> then I looked at the full cost. Yeah, and it went up. It went up. We know it's going to go up. Yeah, we knew that. That's why it was shocking when I see the thirty-three first. You know. <laughs> So it's I guess I feel like we need to go ahead and put it on the ballot. I don't think we got any other choice, to be honest. Well, we have another choice, but I think right. the best thing to do is to try to move forward with it. I do agree on that. Because I don't think that we can. I know people are going to say, well, why don't you wait and see what the regional deal comes out that you get money from the state. I don't think we can bank on that. I don't think we can go in with that idea. And I guess if it does come up later on, I would hope that they would consider giving us some of it. I know the State Department of Corrections Secretary is asking for money from the state to build adult male prison cells, as well as the uh, female or women's prison in Rapid City. So you know where that money's going. Right now. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not that it's beyond this. We we shouldn't expect it. We should expect to only get a minor amount, if any, from that from that uh, initiative. We should also expect next year to see another three or four million dollars added on to that price. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't be responsible to wait. You might want to step up for these. I'm sorry. It wouldn't be responsible for us to wait uh, for anything from that group, I don't think. I'd like to, uh, if I may, make a comment on that. My thinking of that whole process, legislative self study, is if they turn around and come up with a proposal that's good and they are willing to fund it, we're not going to be that far in this process that we can't adapt and change to it. Because if you passed it in November, you're still going to be creating bid documents come the end of the legislative session. And it would cost a little bit more to go back and revise the plant templates and the bids, but I, I don't think that's a good reason to delay. No, no, I don't think it is either. And if we were to get significant money from that, that or other outside sources, as I recall, when our bonding guys were here, that it's quite possible for us to do prepayments to uh, save money in the long run. So uh, there's really no good reason to delay uh, in expectation of getting outside funds from somewhere else. Those outside funds can be uh, a happy circumstance that can reduce our total costs and our our uh, debt costs over the long run. So yeah, I, go ahead. 
Yeah, so I, I you know, I, I, I think that's true. I think the other thing that's true is um, that construction costs are um, extraordinarily high right now, um, in part because of COVID fund availability. Um, and I, I, I think you will, you know, and, and obviously the, 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 the shipping problems and sourcing problems and uh, international trade problems and so on. And, you know, I think some of those things are going to go away over time. And, you know, it's, it, 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 it's very clear that what we're doing is bonding for the worst case scenario for the most that we might need. Um, and I do suspect um, that, um, you know, this regional jail commission is already contemplating and will at some point contribute something. Um, in addition, I, I think supply costs ultimately um, are not going to keep going up the way they have been. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, so we're bidding the maximum amount, but I, I, I don't think we're going to have to spend every penny of that. Um, I, you know, I'm pretty optimistic about the long-term prospects uh, for construction costs, um, particularly given the sort of economic data of the, the last the last month or so. So, you know, I, I you know, for me, um, it's very, very, very important that the county have a decent, humane uh, place uh, for uh, for prisoners and. Um, I don't know any other way that we are going to be able to ensure that in the long run. I mean, I'm I'm watching population go up in surrounding counties, um, and so as population goes up, uh, you know, the number of incarcerated individuals goes up, um, uh, you know, and so 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 I am I am in strong support of this bond issue. I was going to comment. Betty's right on on uh, worst case because we are operating under construction management at risk model, which uh, we're looking at a guaranteed maximum price. Any savings of that comes back to the county. So, if if supply chain issues improve, if costs go down, then we benefit from that. So this is more of a worst case. Dick Strasberg made the point last night in our conversation. He said, really, who's, who sits in hopes that they make money, make less money next year? So to really think the costs are going to go down in a year is only going to be because supply starts meeting demand, but you're not going to see labor costs reduce significantly until there's a lot of competition for these jobs. Because nobody, nobody hopes their income goes down. Given the fact that in today's Argus Leader, the report was that Sioux Falls is on the way towards a uh, billion dollars in building permits, uh, it's going to be years before that construction supply is flexible enough to, to start dropping costs. I mean, they're 60% or 80% higher than what they were last year in building permits. And it's big projects that are happening. Mm -hmm. And those are the same contractors we're looking at. So to wait for construction costs to come down, you're probably looking at five to 10 years, probably. And another point on that, and the idea of waiting in, in our meeting that Steve hosted a few weeks ago, there were people in the audience uh, asking why not wait. And, uh, and I tell you why not wait is because we can't finish it until we start it, for sure. You know, And uh, every year that this thing is not completed will cost us in excess of a half a million dollars out of county in, in our boarding. So that's the cost of waiting is the, the, the inflation on our project costs, as well as the cost we're gonna spend out of county. So for every year we wait, there's another half a million dollars thrown away in another county. And, and yeah, we're gonna be doing that during the, during the project, but until we start it, we can't finish it. So we're kicking that down the road. So to wait another year, add in addition to, to uh, inflation, another half million for every year we wait and that will go up that's a minimum at least yes and steve short uh charts show that show that they're eventually they're going to be
one of the reasons I ran down to your meeting and and because I thought it'd probably come up. Nobody's brought it up yet. I don't know if you've heard the news that Union County is raising our rates for daily boarding. <laughs> what are the numbers? Eighty dollars a day instead of from sixty-five. Uh, but I wanted to come and let you know. I think we're okay on the current opt-out request and the current budget request. So I I did a deeper dive into the numbers we have. Uh, if you guys are, I don't want to digress, but it's just something you're thinking about. You know, for the um, uh, the numbers we're looking at, 2021, our average state of population, 19 and a half inmates. Um, first quarter of 2022, that number was 26 inmates. Uh, but the first half of 22, it settled back in there at 19.8. So we're looking at 20 inmates, which is what we budgeted for. Um, I looked at, uh, we budgeted uh, $500,000 for next year. And, uh, but what I did was I looked deeper into not just how many inmates we have on average, but our average daily population outside of the county, those that we've boarded elsewhere. And that's a little more favorable because we try to keep as many here. We keep them here for the first couple of days, or if we have work release or something like that, we won't exceed the 72 hours. But we've been able to hold that average daily population outside of the county while our average daily population overall was 20 uh, for the last 12 months, that is, since we started doing this, you know, strictly was 13 and a half the inmates per day we're paying somebody else to house for us. Um, $500,000 will allow us to board 17 inmates per day for a year. And I think that's fairly reasonable to expect that because uh, our, our average study population increases over the years, some years it drops, but generally speaking, the trend is upward of uh, 0.75 inmates per day. Um, we're right in there. And, and I think that as long as we don't see a major fluctuation, I think that the $500,000 will cover us. It's gonna be nip and tuck, but I think that it'll get us there or be very close. So I, I don't think we need to look back at did we, did we jump the gun last week? I don't think so. I think it just makes it all the more accurate. Not as, not as much uh, um, cushion, but I think it's accurate. So is the probably gonna raise theirs in too? Well, they just raised this year. Are they, they 80? They're at 85. They're 85. They went from 80 to 85 okay. this year. Okay. And Union County's rate will change January 1. So I, I, I thought that might come up, or if it hasn't come up to you already, somebody's going to bring it up, and I wanted you to be able to respond sure. to that. I know Steve asked me an email yesterday, and I just never got uh, back to him, but though, that was his question, is if this opt-out's adequate, and, and uh, if we can meet that. Okay. Well, do, we need, do we need a motion? Yes. yes. We need to figure out exactly what dollar amount we want first. So yeah. it's, it's $42 million. Seven hundred twenty-three thousand five hundred forty-five dollars. So we can either go forty-two point seven or forty-two point eight, or whatever number you think. I think we go forty-two point eight. I concur. Agreed. I'll make the motion to uh, for the resolution at forty-two point eight million. Second. I have a motion and a second. Now, I did read that correct, right, Carrie? That is the number? Yes. That's the way I understood it, right, Andy? That's... Yes. Uh, Dick, Dick was rounding the 17 or uh, 42 and a half. Or 2.5. He just said 42 and a half, but it was 42.7 and change. Right. So I have a motion and a second for 42.8 million to be placed on the election in November. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Packard. Yes. Poplar. Yes. Motion passes. Am I the only one that has to sign that then? Or do we all have to sign? No, either of you the only one that has okay. to sign it. You lucky guy. <laughs> I have to use my Dick Hammond signature this time. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody Permit, says permission anything, denied. Anybody <laughs> says it's all Travis That's a hard ball, no. right? All yeah. Travis is false if anybody yeah. says it. Yeah. He signed it. He signed it. Uh, let's see. 2023 budget discussion. What's this one? Um, that I just put on there. It's just going to be kind of a 
ongoing item okay. for the next few weeks. So if you had anything you wanted to discuss, you could, but. There's... I guess that's why I ran down with these because I saw that on there. So I jumped the gun. Oh, no, that's fine. Yeah, you're fine. Plus well, we did opt out for the 250,000. So if we do happen to run out, it's, it wasn't the original plan and intent of the 250, but it, it'll be there if we need it, I guess. Yeah, we might. Well, if you get a full force and the police gets a full force, that's. Yeah. Well, and that's the, the case in that we look at the first quarter of this year was 26 was our average daily population for, for the first three months of this year. And, and in, if I was to trim that to just January alone, it was 30. And so if, if it was to, to climb and stay there, we are really in trouble. But, you know, we don't want to base it on too narrow of a time period because there are fluctuations. There are We've been at nine in this year as well. So it, it, it goes up and down. In fact, I think we're at 10 today. I'm optimistic that we're, we have a good number here for next year. That's 10 boarded elsewhere. Or 10 total. Or to, 10, 10 total. total oh, wow. Okay. okay. So it just fluctuates. What we had is, uh, what was it? A couple of weeks ago, we had kind of a, a mass sentencing. I don't know. It's like a we, had, we we took three or four, maybe four to the pen. I think. Cleanup. Yeah, it was a real cleanup. Wow. Well, and uh, and a bunch of them went to the pen, but none our numbers are going back up. But always. Uh, <sighs> we just kind of got them all gathered up on the same day and, and sentenced them all at once. We we got a bunch of them moved down the road where they needed to be. Yeah. So a copy of the resolution printing. So Nicole will bring that down in just a minute. Okay. Well, I can run up and sign it after the meeting too. County owned parcel number 15090-00100-020-01. Tell us about it. <laughs> the 30 by 50 Correct. spot on West Main. So where are we what, at? What what are our options we can do? Well, we're just usually by this time, Lexi's already up here, <laughs> <laughs> yelling at yelling at us for something. <laughs> Been up here twice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. There's the yelping kids. Yep. Um, so first we, um, did you discuss last time appraisal value since I wasn't here, where did that land? Okay. So then that will, and who determined that? Was it through Ina and her? Okay. So we'll have to, that's the appraised value. We have to file a report of the appraised value, um, with the auditors. My microphone was off. That's assessed value. Is there a difference between? I mean, in my rudimentary understanding of real estate, yes, <laughs> there's a difference between the appraised and um, assessed. I, I would say most of the time the appraised value is higher than the assessed value. I don't think that you have to then make it any higher than that. I think the, the, the Three of you, whoever wants to be those three, if you want to use the assessed value for the appraised value, I think that would be appropriate. Um, so then after that, you can do sealed bids or public auction. There's publishing notifications that we'll have to do for that um, both ways. So that would kind of be the next step to, to get the appraised slash assessed value on file and then publish. So even though if we send it to auction, sealed bids or public auction, we still have to get it appraised? Yes. What, what happens if the appraisal comes back under $500? Then we don't have to publish. Okay. So that, that's where the over $500 comes in is basically with the publishing. That's the only thing that changes. So I guess, so our first move is we have to find an appraiser. Yes, unless you can do three people on the commission that want to be the appraisers, their statute does allow for that. 
if you want to see if a, an appraisal company would appraise it just based upon how, I mean, what the parcel is, they may come under that 500, but we wouldn't know until they did. They that. won't have anything to compare it with. That's a very good point. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, we, won't we won't have anything to no because i mean i could probably already say i'm biased because i can't believe that it's worth what it's assessed at i, I, I mean that's yeah, i agree with you yeah, yeah that's a good move disqualify yourself right off the <laughs> well <laughs> and not that i wanted to but i sure I, i'm still having a hard time wrapping my mind around what it's assessed at well, have, I, I, have I, they been notified yes i've talked to them okay so i I guess we're going to have to spend the money and get an assessor. Yeah. Appraiser. Appraiser, sorry. I don't think we got much choice. I don't know how easy it's going to be for them. If you're going to go to a public sale, the appraiser and get the process. Apparently. It has to, you have for, to be surplused. Once it's surplused, given the type of property that it is, you, you have to have an appraisal on file, whether that's three commissioners or a you separate company. A this this is surplus property. I'm not sure what the tax deed. Um, so how on, that on all surplus property, we need to. It depends on the type of property. Hello. One more question on uh, does the eighty percent rule uh, on it, it the uh, selling price has to be at least eighty percent of the appraised value on a lot of types of public. Uh, yeah, there is a statute that I read that was 90%. And I'll look further, but so don't quote me, but I think it was if you don't have any public sales, you don't have any sealed bids at 12 months thereafter, you don't have to publish again, but it has to be at least 90% of what the appraised value was. So we can't, we might be stuck with this property forever. It could happen. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. To go get it back on the tax rolls or everything. No. You know, the real problem is, of course, that, um, uh, you know, the property isn't worth much to anybody. Um, you know, uh, it, it doesn't have much of a value at all because it's in a parking lot. Um, and, uh, an appraiser, I think, would take that into account. Um, you know, if Samantha says that three commissioners can, um, what, are there any criteria for how commissioners do this? Or is it just the magic of being a commissioner that allows you to do this? A commissioner and a real property owner. So the statute says the governing board shall appoint three real property owners of the political subdivision to appraise the value of such property. So it's three commissioners that own real property. Yeah, it seems like the most expeditious way to go with is just to, you know, get our get ourselves an appraiser uh, who hopefully would, uh, you know, not charge us a fortune because we can actually present, um, you know, data that we've already collected. Um, and, uh, you know, that appraiser has to take into account the market value, which is very, very, very low for this property. Um, and, I, you know, and, and just move the process along as quickly as we can. I, I, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't see any any other way to do it. Say that again, though. What you say there? What does it say? The governing board shall appoint three real property owners of the political subdivision to appraise the value of such property. That's in relation to the commissioners. It's, then the next sentence: the governing board may employ a person or persons licensed by the state to do fee appraisals in lieu of property owners. So it gives you the ability to do it either way. So yeah, for a suggestion. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Well, what you want to do is be able to move this thing to a sale, get it to sell. Hopefully, right. it gets sold and then move on. Why don't you just have three commissioners just essentially affirm the assessor's assessment of the property as the value of the property, schedule a sale, publish it, and have a sale? 
but you got to sell within 90% of it, right? That no, is that sale later. That is if there is no sale, yes. that's a real bidder. Yes. Once it goes to sale, the highest bidder buys it, subject to your approval. If so there are, if there are no dollars. bids received, the governing board may have the surplus property reappraised or may within 12 months thereafter sell it at a public or private sale within the 90 days. So if at this first time nobody wants it, then 12 months later you I can't believe the person to. who believed he owned it wouldn't come and buy it. Right. Or, well, yeah, some, yeah. some bid. You know, we've sold property at these sales for $50 mm -hmm. and $100. Because that was the only bid received, and we wanted to get it back on tax roll. So I, I think it's fine. So I think you're overthinking it. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> so you you have to, according to that, you got to wait. To, okay, let's say we do that, because I agree with what Annie's saying there. Mm -hmm. So let's say three of us get together. We said we're going to sell it on that at the praise value. Well, you got to put it up to, to a sale. Assessed. Assessed. Yeah, assessed value. value. So then how long does he have to wait before we have to put it up for sale? Did you say a year? No, we can no, do it. No, that's if that's if yeah, that's if nobody wants it, then okay, it's a year. It Otherwise, but now there's the first publication is not less than 10 days prior to the date of the sale. Okay, week you. and a half-ish. But you had mentioned when I talked to you that there's between uh sealed bids and public auction, one has to be you have to take the high bid and the other sealed bids, you would have to take the high highest bid on sealed bids yes so on sealed bids the governing board may reject any and all bids <clears throat> however if the governing board accepts a bid it must be the bid of the highest bidder and that'd be the same way with the public auction then too Don't see that same requirement for public. Yes, yeah, surplus property may be sold to the highest bidder at such auction, meaning public. So we should uh, we should make a what do we have to make a resolution that we're going to uh, declare the appraised value to be that of the assessed value as established by. The county assessor <clears throat> well first has it already been surplus property because that would be first step declare it surplus okay um and then the next step then would be to appraise it and if you're doing three um commissioners such real property owners shall file a report of the appraised value with the fiscal officer of the political subdivision so the auditor's office it doesn't give any indication of what that report needs to be so once once the value is determined, then um, we can give it to Carrie and then start the publication process. So we need a resolution declaring it surplus first. We don't need a resolution. We can just declare it surplus at the next meeting. Okay. And we can, and then we can accept the three commissioners assessed value of it or right. appraised value of it. Yeah. That's right after that. Yeah. And then set publication and auction date all next meeting. Well, since it's on the agenda, can we do all that now? Well, they have I, to. They have to meet to get right. the. Uh, I think you can at least surplus, maybe do surplus. Sur surplus now. Oh, okay. Because yeah, like Carrie said, it was on the agenda, so I think that that'd be appropriate. So we can surplus it today and then appoint three people. I move to declare the property surplus. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Roll call. Hammond. Yes. Annie. Yes. Smith. Yes. Tucker. Yes. Montclair. Yes. Motion passes. I'll put it on the agenda of the assessment process for on uh, on the agenda for the next meeting. Yep. yep. And then we can appoint three right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. I won't be here next meeting. <laughs> next Tuesday, right? Tuesday. Anybody else gone next Tuesday? I'll be online next Tuesday. Anybody own property or you own your house? Yes. We lost. We lost. Yeah. Yeah. Well,
Well, the only reason I asked is if anybody was gone next Tuesday, we could move the meeting if we needed to. I may or may not be gone next Tuesday. We're still trying to decide if we cancel our vacation or no. Um, but in any case, Nicole would be here, so. I will definitely be gone. <laughs> we'll be gone, yeah. I'll drive it back. Okay with me. Tuesday? Yeah. Okay. Be okay for Tuesday. Fine for me. Okay. So which who's available? And it I mean this I'm sure we can do it with a phone call too. Yeah. Well I can do it, but it won't be here for me until which is fine. Yeah. I would, yeah, I think I'm fine with doing it with a phone call. We've already decided. In effect, that we're yeah. going to accept right. the assessed value as the appraised value. So, agreed. Well, we we have to wait for a, right. a week to officially declare that we have a consensus for it. That all right, Miss so, Yes. Is that okay with us? Okay. <laughs> Leave it. Leave Whoever it. wants to be the three. Okay. Well, so, I guess we we'll volunteer. I'll so, volunteer. Okay, We're good. I'm sure you can just walk across the hall. Yes. And go. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then somebody's just got to write, put your three names down. This is the value that we've come up with based on this criteria, and go upstairs to Carrie's office and hand that in. Yes. We're ready. Okay. So and, does there need to be a motion to appoint those three? It doesn't. It just says to a point. <laughs> Their names will be on the the form for next Tuesday that we'll have to approve and to accept anyway. So and the three names should be in the minutes. Mm -hmm. and volunteers yeah. are appointed in a sense today. Hey. Kind of double coverage. <laughs> I was gonna mention it was it was years ago and honestly, I don't remember the exact circumstances of what the piece of property was but i had a situation where we were surplusing property and we had to we had to declare it under 500 dollars for so we could do a, a you know sale in this way and we designated three appraisers and i think we just had a statement you know we the undersigned find that this property is valued at x and that not it was items it wasn't real estate and then they all three signed it and we put it in the file but it's it's not that complicated. I think I think the value of doing this way, honestly, or rather than to find that it's less than five hundred dollars and then do a private sale when the county, uh, you know, director of equalization says otherwise, is somebody's going to complain that you that you fabricated the situation for a private sale. I think that right. doing it as a public sale uh, is a lot better way to go, especially when it's already documentation of what its value is, and you know the. The county appraised value or assessed value is what's supposed to be 90 90 percent of market value anyway. So right, they're even probably less, but so might not be accurate. But that's what's on the record. And does it say who has to hold this auction then? Since it's not tax deed, it's not necessarily Andy. <laughs> you can always hire it done, but then again, you're gonna. You're gonna hey, man, there's no reason to hire anybody. Yeah. Yeah. We just will not spend it. Just funds. says the count the county may sell real property at public auction or by listing the property with a real estate broker, but we don't need to do that. You don't care to you don't have a problem with selling, do you? I don't like yeah. treasurer can do it, anybody can do it. Yeah, if it designates the sheriff, do it, we just do it for other things, and that's why I stayed in the room so that I'm conducting this thing when I wanted to be in. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So now we've got, we still have executive session for contractual matters, Carrie. Is that correct? Um, I don't have anything unless. No. The only thing I had was the IRA email. Oh, that's right. Sorry. The ambulance. Sherry Lowe's. I guess I yep. She called me yesterday morning. And right now, they're not, the ambulance out of Yankton has served Irene. 
but they're not, you told me they were not going there, right? Yankton? Yeah. Right. And because of the road being out. And she's concerned that basically Yankton doesn't want to do it anymore because they don't think that it's, they don't have much of Yankton County isn't very much into Irene. Uh, she said they've been going, they've been getting about 25 calls there a year, but most of it is to the uh, retirement home, which is actually in Clay County. I went and looked and uh, where it sits. And so she's, they're trying to, just like we are, figure out money on the budget. Uh, but after talking to Travis yesterday, you said that, because she told me Byberg is coming in, but you told me Centerville's all come, coming in there. Uh, and so I don't know where we're at. It's, to me, it doesn't sound like it's a county problem. Like after Travis and I talked, it's more of a, uh, a, a situation between the different ambulances. <laughs> Mm -hmm. organizations that they got to figure out who should be going in there and who shouldn't their territories so that, that's kind of where i'm at because so yankton operates different than we do and i didn't quite understand that until you told me yankton county runs the ambulance service over there yeah comes out of their budget yankton city doesn't kick anything in um whereas we we buy the ambulance and the city Right. puts the personnel in it and handles maintenance right now that's the way i understood it from on the phone if, you know i if, if i i you know if i'm wrong i, I you know, i'll be corrected but that's the way that's the way she explained it to me it's, well it's the only way they can come up with one million or one point three million one point something that's million. what it's costing the county over there to run the ambulance service so so is that person called the city the ambulance service in vermilion I don't think so, no, no. Vermilion wouldn't be the replacement ambulance service for this situation. Irene, this is really an Irene City Council issue. And she has talked to the city yeah. of Irene. Tom there, something? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, they- uh, I think it's Tom Freeberg is the city no. attorney. Well, city attorney? I no, so. I don't think so. But their, their city councils address this. They, they uh, Their intention is to be served by Centerville, and Viper ambulances. Beersford is closer to, than Vermilion, straight down to 46. And um, that's their intention. Now, these small town ambulances have trouble sometimes putting a crew together. That's why sometimes you end up calling another one. And there's delays with that. And you're right, most of the ambulance calls into Irene are to the nursing home. And um, this is an issue that they were presented with when Yankton decided they were gonna stop serving the city of Irene. They're going to, of course, respond to an address one mile outside of Irene in Yankton County. You know, if Irene had its own ambulance service, they probably, their their territory would take that up. But they don't. They've got first responders and they've got a rig, but they can't transport patients. So right now, when you were explaining it to me, like Wakanda, for example, they have first responders, but then they, but Vermillion actually goes into Wakanda for with right. the ambulances, yes. Yeah. I mean, I guess if requested, Vermilion would go to Irene as well. Okay, it's just uh, they've, they've they've got territories mapped out. When like, if for example, if a nine one one call is received by our dispatch center, immediately it's going to pop up what ambulance to page. Okay, and our our dispatch doesn't page those ambulances; they pass those along. Uh, in this case, Turner County or Lincoln County does the dispatch. They would we would contact Lincoln County, and they would page the ambulance from one of these communities. It's, it's a tough situation if you live in these towns that don't have an ambulance and they're relying on uh, volunteers that maybe have eight or 10 people on their crew completely and they all work in Sioux Falls. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's tough. And- uh, it's Well, I don't think the ambulance, I don't know who, I mean, we've, like Matt is here, he's in charge of our ambulance crew. Gary Knudsen's in charge of the Centerville one. I don't know who comes out of Viberg. I don't know who that is, but they don't talk. I think that's their biggest problem. I mean, they're complaining about why do we have to go there when that's in your county? I know Gary complained to me that he had to come to the Volan Road in 19. And he's like, that's not our territory, but we're getting dispatched there. Okay. They need to talk to each other. It, and, it, and it all boils down to funding. 
you know, we're paying for this and we're not getting anything in return. Yeah, Beersford, Beersford Ambulance actually goes pretty deep into Clay County in terms of territory. They're dispatched by Lincoln County and they often will respond to addresses in Clay County. We have no idea. Lincoln County doesn't let us know when they're sending EMS into Clay County. Really? We've had, we've had deaths. We've had OSHA reportable accidents resulting in deaths and we didn't even know about it until we were got called later. Um, that's just something that, well, and that's, that's fairly universal. We didn't, Yankton doesn't let us know. We've had deputies sitting there doing nothing essentially running radar in Irene and had an ambulance scream by and park at a house. And they didn't know, nobody told them. And uh, so we started monitoring Yankton's channels so we could pick up on that when that happens. And uh, they got better at telling us about it, but now they're not responding there anymore anyway. And, and Vermilion's, at least Vermilion is well-staffed generally, they struggle, and, um, but they're well-staffed and could respond, but it's quite a distance. And there are three closer ambulances. So if we think that we're gonna always, we're gonna absorb that territory, that's up to, to Matt Callahan, but if they absorb that territory, they could have closer ambulances conceivably. Oh, it's not about absorbing the territory. They need to they need to actually figure out where their territory is supposed to be at. So they eliminate that complaint. Yeah. But you were you brought up another issue of you not being notified of things happening in Clay County. How do we resolve that? It's just generally we talk to their dispatch centers and try to try to work out agreements to because we had an accident at the corner of 302 and the Greenfield Road about a month ago. I mean, the ambulance, the sheriff, could, obviously, because you guys didn't know about it, because Beersford was the one that was dispatched. Yeah, Union County received that call. It was a 911 call from a cell phone, and it rang into Union County. Generally, Union County would immediately transfer that to us, but for some reason, they either didn't identify it as Clay County location, but they paged the ambulance, they sent their deputy, and, and then they put the word out for highway patrol, and that's when we heard about it. And but you guys, uh, you guys were the ones that showed up before any other. No, Trooper got there first. Oh, there was? Because we had a deputy out and he was there, but he was at another injury crash west of Wakanda at the time. And so once he cleared that, he responded and got there after the trooper got there. How but there much, were how, how much was the response time then? For that is a while. Yeah. For the trooper. For the trooper. Yeah, the trooper was on the ambulance beat him closer to Yankton. Yeah. And he but, responded from over by there. Union County, I think they got there more promptly. But. Which is, well, I don't think they ever showed up. Maybe they, they turned back when they realized it was a Clay County and the trooper was gone. Because my wife was there. She's the one that, she didn't happen upon it, but there was people standing on the road. And okay. They started directing traffic, which is the problem at that, especially at that intersection. That yeah. There needs to be some lights on there. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that's why you guys should be, need to be notified a lot faster than word of mouth. We, we did get that one uh, via... Uh, Union County reaching out to any unit in the area and we got it that way and so we got it as quick as uh, after they had paged the ambulance but we didn't have anybody that could get there <laughs> so I guess if I call Sherry back I'm just going to tell her that I recommend that they have their ambulance director get together with these other ones is she calling in regard to who she was She's the county commissioner. She was, yeah. She, Yankton? Yeah. She was hoping, because they handle the ambulance over there. That, that's their budget. Yeah. She was hoping we would take Union, or take Irene. They're trying to hand it off. It's essentially what's happening. Yankton County is. And I don't, you know, it's not my concern necessarily. Matt Callahan would be the, the go-to person for that. I remember some time back we had uh, you know, quite a negotiation about uh, the interstate right around the area of the coffee cup. Union County wanted to keep that area in their uh, territory. Clay County can always get there faster. Vermilion can always get there faster. It's as close as Elk Point, and we can put the crew together faster. Sometimes Elk Point has to wait a while until they get three people. They can't roll the rig until they get enough people in it. I don't know what their minimum staffing is now, but uh, sometimes they have trouble with that, and they eventually uh, will often ask Vermilion to respond because they can't field the crew. And eventually we decided to leave it at, that's Elk Point's territory, but let us know if you need help. If 
often what would happen is we'd have an injury crash in that area and our ambulance would just go even though we transport the or transfer the call to Union County. And then uh, then what happens, Vermilion Ambulance gets there first, they end up getting the, the transport. A point Ambulance gets there, no patient anymore. They just took three people away from work and they kind of want to leave things alone. And uh, that ended up being a mutual agreement. Not everybody is happy with it, but um, you could have something like that here. But I think, I don't know if Vermilion is going to have any objection or desire to go to Irene regularly. I know that if they could not get an ambulance and you asked for a million to go, they would go. I know that I, I thought maybe this came of an incident we had just the other day. Uh, we had a uh, Viberg ambulance respond to the nursing home, transported a patient that uh, active CPR. They got to meet the air ambulance at the church in Irene. The air ambulance landed. They have advanced care providers there that were able to declare the person deceased. They left. Now the ambulance is stuck with this patient in the back of the rig. The nursing home won't let them come back. <laughs> and so they, it took us quite a while till we got a funeral director to that, to that scene to take the body out of the ambulance. And meanwhile, that, that Centerville ambulance, which is it is for that up. entire region, was tied up until we could get that, that body out of the rig with nowhere to go. And then we had to get a, a funeral director out of the out of Sioux Falls for that. There wasn't one in Irene. They were at a funeral. <laughs> All three of them. Yep. The whole Gosh. the whole crew was at a funeral, and uh, and it was just uh, one of those worst case scenarios. And thankfully, nothing happened from it. The, the Viper ambulance didn't have any other pending calls, and nothing came of it. And they were great, and they they waited and, and it was taken care of. <clears throat> well, it's better if Viper or Centerville handles Irene. Just as response time. But. Yeah, it's better than Yankton. Oh, They're yeah. closer than oh, yeah. Yankton. But in fact, so is Beersford closer than Yankton. Viberg must be about the closest as far as his actual Viberg. response time, not withstanding building a crew. Yeah. I mean, Centerville is pretty close. <coughs> yeah. It's you know, about a Viberg wash between the two. North, pretty close, yeah. But putting together the crew sometimes is the hard part of a small town. Yeah. I, I don't know if, if your board has any we don't really have any authority or obligation here other than no. possibly to request of Vermilion Ambulance to look into it, but I, I really think this is an Irene City Council question. We're talking about the city of Irene, right? Yeah, I agree. I, I, I just brought it up because she contacted me, but I will contact her back. I mean, I think I'm going to tell her that probably they need to talk to, and she has talked to Irene. Yeah, I was in a meeting where it was brought up, but they, they, um, I, I, I can imagine that Yankton's probably catching some heat about her decision and, and they, they want are. to see that there's coverage. It seems to me like there was an article in the Yankton paper here a while back about ambulance coverage in small towns where they were, it's a big think, problem. Yeah, actually, even. Lesterville, or where would they? The county's got the responsibility for covering Lesterville, but it's so far that it, it's better for others to respond, perhaps. Yeah, they need to. I don't know how you do it, but it needs to. Just, you need to take a map out and be like, right. Okay, here's. It's kind of like the fire districts. Yeah, you're. Well, they're screwed up too, though. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, it's where who's ever closer. I mean that it's it's all about response time. But but the people running those departments, it's about funding to be able to keep up equipment and all too. I mean, right. if they give up any territory, they lose some funding. And I'm looking at it and like most people would. If you want the ambulance, I don't care who comes. Right. I don't care if Sioux Falls can get there quicker. Send them. Right. <laughs> if I need them. Right. And and you know minutes count if not seconds in yeah say if you have a car accident where you have you know, bleeding out issues that seconds can count somebody has to be there as quickly as possible in the view of the people that need the help okay, okay. i'll talk to you.
Yeah. Okay. And I think she just got a hold of you because she, they're on the hook there. They're the sponsoring agency. We're not the sponsoring agency in Clay County. Right. Yeah, I, it, it's clear that she's just trying to figure out some answers. Yeah, what to do. Right. I do have something quick for executive session on the contractual. I just thought of oh. it'll be really quick. Okay. I believe so. Where does Richard go? Oh, maybe that's why I'm thinking of that because I know Free Bird does. I just remember that. I just remember that. If you know what I know, it's Free Okay, thanks, Ian. Thanks. Take a motion. Move to go into executive session for contractual matters. Second. A motion and a second. Uh, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Humphrey. Yes. Humphrey. Yes, we're in executive. Move to come out of executive session. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Yes. Mockler. Yes, we're in regular session. There's nothing else. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say that or roll call. Hammond. Yes. Manning. Yes. Smith. Yes. Mockler. Yes. Mockler. Yes, we're adjourned. Okay.